Let us talk once again about the coordinate geometry and the closed figures. In this, our real objective is to understand what are the principles in coordinate geometry that can be useful in determining what kind of a shape we are dealing with. Okay. So for example, take a look at this diagram that we have been provided. It is an X, Y coordinate plane. And then we have a shape here, right? So if someone asks me a question that what exactly is this shape then based on the visual appearance without the actual dimensions I will say that well it looks like a square right but we may not be 100% sure because we do not know the exact measurement of these two sides right because human brain keep in mind that a human brain has limited capacity when it comes to comparing the two dimensions if those two dimensions are on the different axis, okay, which is the case here. So when we actually measure the dimension, I find that the length is 1.18 units and the height is 0.98 units, right? So you see the difference is very small, very subtle difference here, but still it is some difference. Hence, you cannot classify that this is a square. It is indeed a rectangle, right? And that is precisely what we want to discuss today that if you are given any object, something like this, any polygon or any circle, using the coordinate geometry principles, how would you determine the exact measurement of the sides? Assuming that you have been given the coordinates of the vertices or of the sides, right? And the second is, once you know the distances, how would you actually tell that if that shape resembles to a quadrilateral or would that be a circle and if it is a quadrilateral what kind of quadrilateral right so this is precisely what we want to look and discuss today so with that we are going to answer our first question that how do you measure the distance of the sides okay for that we are going to use the distance formula in the coordinate geometry and what distance formula tells us that let's say on this object we are given the coordinates of any vertices right so let's say there is a vertex a it has coordinates x1 and y1 okay so that's my first vertex right here and the second vertex is vertex b it has coordinates x2 and y2 okay so the distance formula tells that this line segment a b will be of distance that can be measured by as x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square and then this whole thing comes under a square root okay so this is how you measure the length of any line segment on a coordinate plane yes you simply subtract the x coordinates square them subtract the y coordinates square them and then take a square root of this entire sum and then that becomes your distance of that specific line segment right and then there is one more thing you need to know it is known as a midpoint formula now the midpoint formula it helps us determine the coordinates of the midpoints of any line segment so in this case let's say this line segment ab it has a midpoint as c so what exactly will be the coordinates of this midpoint c so the coordinates will be the x coordinate will be simply a summation of the x coordinates of the two extremes right of a and b right and then divide that with 2 and then sum up your y coordinates and then divide them with 2 this will be the pair of values of the x value and the y value of this midpoint so this is how you determine the midpoint think of it this way that how do you obtain the midpoint of two numbers you simply sum them up and then divide by 2 right that's exactly the concept what we are using here okay now with this knowledge now we are going to proceed towards how do you actually use the distance formula and the midpoint formula to actually determine the side length of any polygon or any quadrilateral and then determine what kind of a shape that is all right so let's take a look at our very first example so in this example we are given a quadrilateral on an xy coordinate plane and we have four vertices c d e and f right and then we are given the coordinates of each one of those vertices what we need to do is classify what kind of a quadrilateral it is okay so in this case what we have is the vertex c has coordinates 5 3 vertex d has coordinates 4 3 e has coordinates 5 2 and f has coordinate 
1, negative 1. Okay. Now, next step is for us to compute the side length of each one of those four sides. Okay. So, side df, we can compute using the distance formula that I will simply subtract my x coordinates 4 and 1, subtraction of that, square it, and then subtract the y coordinates 3 and negative 1. So, 3 and negative 1 will make 3 minus minus 1 and put them under square and then this whole thing comes under square root. When you solve this whole thing, you find that the df is equal to 5 units, okay? Likewise, I'll compute the line segment EF, okay? It will be exactly the same way that 5 minus 1, which is x here and x here, right? Square of that plus 2 minus minus 1 and square of that again and then this whole thing comes under square root. When you solve all of this computation, you'll find that this is also equal to 5 units. So far, we are finding that this distance is 5 units. This line segment is also 5 units. And based on this dimension, we don't even need to take this distance formula. We can simply say that, well, the y coordinates is same in both of these. It's only the difference of x to x, which is 4 to 5, which is 1 unit. And the side length c is also of 1 unit because x is same, y is only 1 unit away. So now you have some very important findings that you have two sides that are congruent. DF is congruent to EF, right? So we have a pair of sides that are congruent, right? And they are also adjacent to each other, right? Likewise, you will say that the side length CD and CE, they are also congruent. So you have another pair of sides that are congruent and they are also adjacent. And this is the property of a quadrilateral in which you have the pair of adjacent sides that are congruent to each other. And that shape resembles the shape of a kite, right? So this shape is known as the kite shape, okay? Now, visually, you could tell that, well, this looks like a kite, but we want it to be sure. That's why we computed this distance, and that's why we computed this distance, and so on, here and here. Okay, so this was one example for us to use the principles of coordinate geometry, right? Obtain the side lengths and then determine what kind of a shape it could be. All right, so now let's take a look at another example in which we will discuss about a circle. So our given scenario is that we need to find out whether the given point 1, 1, it lies on the circumference of a circle, the circle that has a radius 2 and is centered at the origin, okay? And that's exactly what we have here, that we have an xy coordinate plane. This is my origin. And then we have a circle that is centered at this origin. Okay. And the radius of this circle is 2 units. So let me draw another radius here. So this is 2 units. So I have defined the radius. I have defined the circle. And then I need to find out whether the point 1, 1, it lies on this circle or not. Right. So remember from our circle discussion, what is the formula for a circle? if the circle has a center at origin. That formula was very simple. It was that square of x and y coordinate and addition of those should be equal to the radius, right? That is the circle formula for the one which is centered at origin, right? Now, here is my given point. It has coordinate 1, 1, right? So the square of each one of those will be 1 square plus 1 square, right? And the radius is 2. So I will simply put that under a square. So this gives you 4 and the square of 1 and addition of those gives you 2. So clearly 2 is not equal to 4. Now because this specific combination of coordinates does not equal the square of the radius, then we will conclude that this point, the 1, 1 does not lie on the circle. So with that, we will take a pause here and that was the purpose of understanding how you can use the principles of coordinate geometry and apply them on the closed figures.